Today I'm going to show you how you can slice your STLs using Cura or Slicer, but not on your computer, but instead on your Raspberry Pi running Octoprint. Even if you're confident with slicing software, it's still a bit of a nuisance to slice the file, save it onto an SD card, and then transfer it onto your 3D printer. If you're using something like Octoprint, it's still a bit of a pain to locate that G-code file and then upload it ready to print. You might think those problems are pretty trivial and you're probably right, but imagine this situation. At school, we're setting up a brand new Prusa Mark III and I'm gonna have multiple teachers using it that have little to no experience with slicing software. Rather than having to install software on all of their laptops and then having to train them up afterwards, I'd rather have something in place on the Raspberry Pi. Imagine if they could just upload the STL, change a few key settings, and then be printing in no time. Well, that's what this video is about. It is possible to use either Cura Engine or Slicer Engine to do just this. Now, I wasn't originally gonna make a guide for this, but I found very few resources when I was researching how to do it myself on the internet. And furthermore, installing the Slicer plugin is a little bit tricky, so I'll be glad to walk you through. Now, I don't zoom into the screen or anything as I edit this together, and that's because the full step-by-step -step instructions are down below in the description. So after you've watched the video, please reference them. They'll cut everything as short as possible and cut out the mistakes that you see me make in this video as I was working out the process. Let's begin by looking at the default Cura Engine plugin that comes pre-installed with Octoprint. So here we are in Octoprint. I have a bunch of different plugins installed, but you might have noticed one of the default ones that comes up is Cura Engine 15.0.4. This comes installed by default on Octoprint and it allows us to actually slice STLs on the Raspberry Pi or whatever else you're running Octoprint on and therefore not need an external slicing program. You can see here, however, we need to import a profile and what it's looking for is an any file. There's an important note here that says anything newer than this will not work. So the newest ones have either JSON or Cura Profile. So you're going to need to locate and downstall an older version of Cura to be able to do this. So here we have an old version of Cura. It needs to be in the 1.5s as it tells us back in Octoprint. And I've set up everything for an Ender 3. I'll just quickly run you through it. If I come to my machine settings, you can see that I've set up 220 by 220 by 250. I have one extrude. I have a heated bed and none of these other things really matter at this stage. Now back in our print settings, there are some other things you need to make sure you get right. 1.75 for the filament diameter and also set up your temperatures and overall print speed. As you can see, compared to the newer versions of Cura, there's a lot missing, but it should be enough for basic slicing operations. So then what we can do is come up to file and then save profile and that will give us the any file that we so desire that we can't get from any of the new Cura versions. So back in Octoprint, we can come to Browse and select that profile that we exported. I'm gonna make it my default profile and then tick Confirm. Let's save that one. Now that that's all set up, we're gonna come down to Upload. I'm gonna upload just a simple cube for now. And we have this pop-up box come up and it's telling us it's gonna use Cura Engine. We only have one profile in there. Our printer profile is important because we need the sizes set up correctly and then after slicing I'll get it to do nothing. But that one being a small model took a short amount of time but I don't really use Cura and I don't really like doing this blind so let's make two improvements to the process. The first is to install a version of Slicer for Octoprint and we're going to follow the instructions from the plugin page on Octoprint. First thing we need to do is come to Plugin Manager and install one half of it. The other half is a little bit trickier and I'll talk you through it. Okay, we found our option, let's click Install. It's finished installing, so let's restart this. So that's one half of the install done, but if we see here in our notes, it says that we have to manually do some other things. So that's what we're gonna do now. To do that, we're gonna need a program called Putty, and that allows us on a Windows machine to SSH into the Raspberry Pi and run this script here. It's a free download and it's a very small file. The link will be in the description below. What we're aiming to do is to match our IP address here and making sure it's on SSH. That's the only thing we should need to do. We're gonna get this security message the first time that we run this and we can click yes. And it's gonna ask us to log in. If you haven't already, I highly recommend changing the default password for your Raspberry Pi. Okay, we're in, let's switch back. 
basically we're going to follow these instructions one at a time but if you've never done any command line in Linux you're going to struggle with this. I'm somewhat familiar, definitely not an expert but I think I should be able to talk you through. First thing we need to do is to copy and paste all of this and save it in a file which will save on the Pi and then run via the command line. So we're going to copy all of this. We're going to type in cd for choose directory slash home. And that's going to take us to a nice place. Now after that we're going to run sudo which puts it in admin mode and then nano and then we're going to name our file and it's recommending up here we call it slicer underscore install dot sh. You can call it whatever you want but I'm just going to follow the guide exactly. I'm going to ask for your password once again because we're running as an admin. We can't use control V on the keyboard instead we have to right click having already copied from here and then everything will be pasted in and then down here it says write out control O. Hit enter because we've already set up our file name. You can see we wrote 18 lines and we can go control X to exit. Step two is to change the permission so we can execute the script. Let's copy in exactly what it says. If we ever get any errors without permission, we simply need to add sudo to the front of the line. Alrighty, step three, we can now actually run the script. And it's prompting us to ask what version of Slicer we want to use. So let's head to the Slicer website and see what the newest one is and see if we can get that happening. Up the top we can see that 1.2.9 is the latest version, so let's attempt to install that. We failed with an error and we have a dependency and it's giving us three ways to try that so let's give it a go. Excellent, no errors there so now we can simply hit the up arrow to cycle back through our command and then run the script again. Finally, we have a result pass. That means everything should have worked well. The key for me was installing version 117 as it was suggesting. When I went to the release notes for Slicer, I saw that that was the previous stable version behind the current one, so it's not too old. Next, we'll come up to step seven and we need to copy this here. And that is the path to where Slicer resides on the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to come up to our settings and we're going to paste that in. is exactly what we want to see here. Last thing to do is to import a profile. Here we have Slicer. You'll notice that I'm using a version after 117. I'm using 129, which is the current stable release. And that seems to work perfectly. You need to go through and change everything you want. You can have multiple profiles here, but basically you have set active out of everything in your drop downs, whatever you want to export. And then after that, you come to file, export config, and save in any file. Back in Octoprint, we go to import profile and then we click that file. All right, we have our one profile. Let's save that. And to do a test, let's upload another cube. So this time we're presented with a choice and we can go to slicer and then our slicing profile will be waiting there. Let's hit slice. After only 10, 20 seconds, we're sliced and ready to go once again. Now you'd have to say this process is a little bit archaic. Not being able to position anything, rotate anything, not getting any options for overriding slicing parameters, but fortunately there is a way around that. So we're gonna come up to the plugin manager and install one more plugin. We're gonna type in slicer. That's ER, not 3R. And we're gonna install full featured slicer. After not long, it will be installed and we can restart and see what the difference is. Okay, we're back in and we'll notice you have a new thing at the top called Slicer and that looks a lot better. We can use our mouse to change the view 
and we have the common buttons we would expect in most slicing programs like rotate, scale, move, make copies, all of those type of things. We'll also notice down here next to our STL we now have a slice button that will load it up here. As you can see we can now move it around and we can scale and all of those things that you would expect. We hit from the drop down that we want slicer and then our profile is automatically loaded. If we want we can slice right now but we do importantly have some overrides which we can apply. So say I wanted to change my temperature for this print or my fill density or supports or anything like that, I can enable that here. And I have a bunch more if I go to advanced. This is really handy because it gives us flexibility from the single profile that we've uploaded. Let's slice it and see how long it takes. Okay, once again, very fast. Normally if we came to G-Code Viewer, we would be able to see it here, but that's because I'm not connected to the printer. And if we switch to the webcam tab, you can see why. Ender 3 is missing, so I guess we better do something about that. Well, that's better. We've got a brand new Ender 3 Pro to try this out on. Let's get our pre-sliced G-code and see how it goes. A humble cube, but a proof of concept nonetheless. Do you think this is a worthwhile process? Let me know in the comments if you're going to consider it or if you're already using it. Now I should mention that there are other ways from different slicing software to automatically save your slice file and upload it to your Raspberry Pi, but I think that's worth covering in a separate video. So it would be remiss of me to not mention that Ender 3 Pro. I've made a bunch of videos on the Ender 3 and I intend to make a bunch more on the Ender 3 Pro. Starting with a comparison video, is it worth it for the extra money? Please subscribe if you don't want to miss that. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.